everyone and welcome to your NARSA weekly update for the week commencing Monday the 1st of April 2024. It's Gary here again and you know what, I'm not going to start off with some sort of stupid April Fool here that would kind of get you going and maybe get you a bit excited about something. I think David Dickinson started April Fools a wee bit early on Saturday and I'll get to that, oh my word, I'll get to that in a wee bit. But I'd like to start off by wishing everyone a happy Easter. I hope that whatever you did and whoever you did it with, you had a fantastic time with friends or family or as I say, whatever it is you did. Well, here we are. We are in the week of getting our eye on the prize with the monumental old firm game. And, and you know, the, the monumental old firm game in early April seemed like quite a long time away as we turned into the winter break and then just kind of came out of the winter break. And here we are. And we are exactly where we were hoping to be. You know, ideally, the Motherwell result didn't happen a couple of weeks ago and we'd be in an even more commanding position and we would have played the Dundee game as well. But we are where we are and we still have everything to play for. And, and quite honestly, apart from the 55 season, I think this is the... This is the time of the season when, when we typically we're trying to just stem the bleeding, aren't we? You know, we're, we're holding on to some sort of hope that, well... We've still got to play them twice, and then they still need to play the other four teams on the in the in the top in the top six. So you never kind of know, and and that's the sort of guff that we kind of have to say to ourselves at the time because we never want to stop believing, and anything's possible until it's not. But this time it's a wee bit different, and that's because of of the board, you know, bringing in, you know, and fully supporting Philippe Clement back in in October, you know, stemming the bleeding from the Michael, the, the, the torturous end to the Michael Beal era, quite frankly. And now we're in a spot, uh, you know, and the, and the team and Philip Clement specifically is in a spot where he knows enough about the team, he knows enough about, you know, probably, hopefully, about playing playing the team from the East End and, and you know, what we can and can't do to be able to, to try and, and get a performance out of this team to, to win the game and and really do what we need to do hopefully the last old firm game because we didn't really play well um, at all until the, the, the end of the game when we were already 2-0 down that we get an opportunity where he says right okay that didn't work the way we hoped this is the way that it's going to work so very 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 exciting times and I'm sure the anticipation and the excitement is going to build even more as we get towards the end of the week so here I got a, I, I think, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think I've got a what Gaz did wrong last week to start off with. And apparently I said last week that the game against Dundee was going to be March the 10th. I don't, I don't listen to the pods back, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but if I said March the 10th, obviously we're not going to get into Marty McFly's DeLorean and go back the way the game is, if it goes ahead, going to be on the 10th of April, which is this month. Now, and I'd like to know if anybody got the the jazz joke for for the jazz club that I was going to go to last week. I, I, I did play that wee part as I was doing some testing uh, for Erin, and she didn't get the joke at all because jazz, the only way is up music, didn't make its way over to North America. <laughs> so she gave me a blank look, and I was kind of blinking back at her, and then she's like, I don't get it. What, what, what is it? Uh, you know, I heard what you said. I just don't understand. So if that was a bit of a flop, I apologise about that. You know, you just need to put yourself out there from a comedy perspective every now and again and just see how and where it goes. <laughs> anyway, on to the game segment for this week. And, of course, just the one game uh, this past week, and that was Saturday's 3-1 home win against Hibs with goals from James Tavernier, eventually. His serial death is brilliant goal. And Rabi Matondo, in fact, you know what? All three goals, all three finishes... Uh, were, were, were brilliant uh, when, when I think about it. Actually, the moves were quite good up to to the goals as well. And on on a day, you know, you knew something kind of weird was going to happen when you've got a day where a Hibs player tries to decapitate two of his teammates in one go. <laughs> Do you see that? Just utter comedy gold only in Scotland, I guess, is, is what people are saying. Um, but this one, this game I thought was overall a wee bit, a wee bit stuffy. Um, at times, you know, we, there was periods of time where we did really well, I thought, especially in the first half, um, but I never honestly thought we were in danger of 
of losing any points, you know, and, and even when it was 2-1 for, for the longest time, and you see the goal that they got, the goal they got was just a complete switch off by uh, by, by James Tavernier, actually, which he owned after after the fact, which is which is great. Kind of own it during the moment, James, and that would be even better because then you could actually track the guy and uh, stop, him, stop him getting that, that shot in. But even when it was 2-1 for the longest time, I think, you know, that's where Philippe Clement and the team have gotten. I know I've talked about this before, you know, in terms of, of confidence, of mindset and, and what it is we're trying to do. So, yeah, overall, just another 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 solid game against Hibs. It would be good if we could play Hibs every single week because we'd be champions by now, I think, <laughs> based on our record against them. But positives, of course, the score, another victory, another two goals to add to our goal difference bank as well. Another victory against Hibs and another two folks that, that scored against them this season, Dessers and Tav. I think that's some. What did I say last week? Was it seven different goal scorers? That nine different goal scorers now? Something like that anyway. And, you know, in fits and starts of the game, as I mentioned, we were, I thought we were very good. And we just ultimately did what we needed to do. We won the game. We didn't get any injuries. We got some we got some players with minutes back in their legs as well. Um, and I think I, I seen yesterday, I haven't actually read an article about it, but I did see, I heard on Saturday and then seen something yesterday about uh, James Tavernier becoming the highest scoring British defender in history. And that's testimony to, to how and what he's been doing for us. So... Uh, if indeed that's the case, congratulations, well done, well deserved to James Tavernier. As I've said before, we're not going to appreciate this guy until he goes. That's life as a football fan. It's not until after the fact that you get the opportunity to truly reflect and revere on on what it is you had. So it's not a it's not a failing of Rangers fans or anything along those lines. And I thought, I, quite honestly, I thought that that was Dessa's best game for us. I thought the way that he. He was chasing everything. He had lightning pace. He seems very direct. His his goal it was terrific as well. It didn't stop and and uh, you know that's a, that's a good sign for us if we if we get that sort of uh, serial dessers between now and the end of the season. And equally, I thought Scott Wright did well. He's never normally. Um, you know, historically, a, a good starter for us. You know, very. Um, if he's going to have an impact, primarily it's coming off the bench, or if we play in a cup final <laughs> at Hamden. But I thought he did well um, as well. You know, he's 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 doing well. So I mean, this bodes well for the last two months of of the season for us with with these guys that you know we've we've kind of got a lot of frustration for uh, over times past that if they come in and start to do a job in the last what would that be you know hopefully not even a dozen games probably 10 10 games left I guess it would be hopefully if we get to the Scottish Cup final so yeah that was good it was great to see Ross McCausland and Rabbi Matondo and Sima continuing their, their returns from from the injuries and you know really at the most opportune times for us you know so we're, the squad is starting to look you know, a lot more healthy and, and long may that continue because then we're genuinely a force to be reckoned with, both in the ability to be able to to prepare for the games properly and, and have options for Philippe Clement, but also in game to be able to say, right, okay, that didn't work, move him there, bring that back, let's, you know, move to a back three, a back four, whatever it is he would do. So yeah, you know, nothing almost nothing but positives from from the game. The negatives do you know what? I mean, as I say, we're not going to appreciate James Tavernier until he's gone. His penalty was absolutely garbage, wasn't it? I mean, going down the middle is a thing that a lot of players do now for a penalty, but you need to lift it off the ground a wee bit, you know, so that if the if the goalie's just going to kind of flop down, that he's not going to get any chance to, to get it with his feet. Just a, just a poor penalty. And then, you know, to compound that, what I mentioned earlier, his defending for their goals was what's the best word to you like um, sleepy his defend his defending was sleepy and you could see it when you see the replay and fair play to him you know afterwards he's like yep that's that's what happened we you know have to own that and, and take it forward but his goal was absolutely fantastic what a finish what what technique to be able to to finish it but overall not a lot of negatives it was all it was all pretty good and as i mentioned i just didn't feel in any danger it was just a matter of when not if we were going to get that that decisive third goal and, and enjoy the rest of the game on the stats the stats this week is taken from live score because the rangers website didn't give me any stats at all yesterday please check back in later and um, was was that they didn't give me any of the, the match hub stuff they usually do for both the men and the women 
and and such. So that was a bit of a downer. So what live score says we had sixty percent possession. Felt more felt like more than that to be honest. Fifteen shots on goal, eight on target versus Hibs four shots on goal with one on target. So kind of dominant uh, overall, as I said, without anything absolutely spectacular. Here we go. Right, on the referee watch, I seem to be doing this more and more. I kind of starting to lament the fact that I did a referee watch. I was hoping just to say, here was an incident, here was an incident, 7 out of 10. But th these guys are giving me a lot more work than I would rather have, quite honestly. And, and just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, David Dickinson and his refereeing colleagues just had an absolute, like, an utter disaster. Of a, a nightmare of a game, didn't he? You know... He, he did well awarding the penalty. It was an absolute penalty. Um, of course, once you've seen the replay, you, you see, right, okay, there's no choice. And, and you know, I could see why he would miss that in the beginning. He's looking at a ball swinging over and there's just bodies flying around. So no complaints about that. And, and then all the bizarreness that came after disallowing Scott Wright's rebound goal for, for the encroachment when, one, the encroachment, isn't clear and obvious. It's supposed to be clear and obvious, isn't it? And then two, the Hibs player was literally next to Scott Wright, like shoulder to shoulder with Scott Wright, side by side, you know. So if anybody's encroaching, two players are encroaching. So what do you do? You're, you're giving the advantage to the to the defending team? Is that is that the rule? I'm fairly sure it's not. I don't know for a fact. But I think worldwide, there was a whole bunch of people just kind of just kind of going, I, I don't know what the rule is. I just assumed it was going to be a retake. And then he's like, nope, that's their ball. Off you go. And, and that's it. Utterly, absolutely yeah, bizarre. And the, and the disbelief, I think, from all our fans was was just kind of collective, I think. And, and then, you know, if that's if we've been educated on the rules, then that's fine. But I don't, in subsequent, you know, information that, that's been shared... I don't. Th I think he made a mistake. Like it, it's not actually the rule. It should have been a retake of a penalty if there was any sort of of encroachment there. So I just I don't understand. And then it, it confuses things a little bit more when he, he, we've got two drop balls that that should have been technically as per the rule should have been our drop ball because the ball hits the referee both of the times. He gives the ball over. Oh, there's an injury at one point. I think the second one was. And, and he gives the ball straight back to them when it should have been ours. Like, just, he completely lost the play. It was almost, it was almost deliberate. It was almost like where he's playing, right, let's let's go, guys, and play the opposites game. And in the opposites game, we're just going to give everything the opposite way. These guys have got riled up. We've been, we've been warned that we're not going to give them any favours or anything like that. We've already given them the penalty, which we managed to chalk off, which is great. I don't even like talking like that. You know, I'm being facetious a wee bit here, but I genuinely don't like talking like that. But that's what they've managed to do, two and four is it's just absolutely awful. So he's getting a two out of ten. And the only reason he doesn't get a one or a zero is that it didn't cost us a game. But the the challenging thing with that is he's one of the better guys that we've got. You know, that's the worry, I guess. <laughs> because I've never really had cause to, to give him a hard time because he's always just kinda kinda just went about his business and not done anything too too wild or anything but just awful absolutely awful terrible 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 performance I don't know who's refereeing this week but hopefully I'm not spending the same amount of time on refereeing decisions after this weekend's game and on to this weekend's game of course we are back to the regular amount of time between ourselves and the UK which is a great thing I didn't manage to open my mouth to change feet I don't think so much after <laughs> the last one which is kind of good but we are at home to the mob from the east end on Sunday the 7th of April, and that's a 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time kickoff, noon UK. A couple of early ones coming up for us over the next wee while here. And, you know, I mentioned it a wee bit there. I can't really express how important this one is for us. This is this is what we've worked towards, certainly ever since Philippe Clement walked in the door. And it's and it's very simple for me. We, we win this game, and that puts us in an absolutely commanding position you know leading into the Dundee game and the following midweek which if we're fortunate enough to win that one or if we earn the right sorry I should say to win that one then we open up uh, a five point gap with six games to go that's monumental and and of course it's a bit of a cliche but these games are very often the the, the telling games in, in, in league championship success and or failure um, over over the past number of, of seasons but the irony is that of course they beat us twice 
and if we win, we go two points ahead of them. You know, so it's been it's actually been the results against other teams that have been a major factor, eh, which has always been our downfall. We've we kind of relatively performed okay against them, but you know, we 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 can't afford for this one, you know, to to fall short again. And then you know, after after everything that we've gone through to get ourselves into this position, if we end up having a motherwell performance or a, a performance, an old firm performance that we had in the first two performances of this season, it's going to be a long afternoon for us or morning, I guess, for for us over here in North America. We just have to go hell for leather from the off and just put one over on them. All too often, there's been there's been too much respect um, on that and. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, we got beat. We've got, we've scored one goal, almost a consolation goal against them, and they beat us one 0 at Ibrox. They beat us two one at Sharkhead earlier in the season. So I have to say, Rogers knows what he's doing in these games, and I can't say that he's ridden his luck a whole hell of a lot. We need to go out and earn the right to win this game, and I think Philippe Clement knows that now. Certainly been educated about that, so we'll, we'll get that organised. And as I say, hell for leather from minute one and get ourselves um, in a position where we can just put them to the sword and a healthy victory plus some some extra goals wouldn't go amiss as well. We know what we need to do, folks. On RTV, and nothing major as far as I could tell. There were a couple of rumblings on the, the NASA group chat about uh, some buffering and, and, and such, but I think for the most part it was okay for everyone else, so I have to imagine those were basically just... Um, you know, local issues or, or, or equipment issues in the in the in the, the club or something like that. I'm not hundred percent sure. On the shout outs, I do have one for uh, fundraising that was provided to me by John McTrusty. We've already shared this on the the NARSA uh, the NARSA socials, I believe, and the. I say I believe because I, I don't keep a whole hell of a lot of an eye on that. <laughs> I know I should, um, and it's 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 for the Emily 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 Emily. Emmy Smiley Charity Foundation, my apologies, my, my writing's kind of small this week and my eyes haven't fully woken up just yet, but we have a signed shirt that's kindly donated by James Tavernier and Janice Bell and every penny of this, uh, it's a raffle, not an auction, is going to the amazing work um, to, of the Emmy Smiley uh, Charity Foundation and I'll just read out a wee bit here if you don't mind. Um, we have a raffle for an incredible piece of Glasgow Rangers memorabilia with special permission granted from the governing bodies. Glasgow Rangers captain James Tavernier had two shirts made that said simply Jimmy Bell 1953 to 2022. He was, sorry, he wore one in the first half and one in the second half. Um, one he kept and the other he has donated to this cause that is so dear to him, Jimmy and Jimmy's family. Um, so rather than auction where it would uh, of course make huge money it has been decided that we can raffle this shirt to give everyone a chance of owning something historical and unique Tav has signed it on the back and added the, the game details Rangers 2 Dundee United 0 and included the goal scorers probably because he scored <laughs> probably because he scored tickets are £10 each and there is no limit to how many you can buy and the draw will be made on the 5th of April so we need to get going on that the draw is going to be this Friday folks so uh, with thanks to Janice and James is, is how it finishes what I'll do is I'll put the link on the blurb for today's pod and get that um, get that over to you and if you can support that charity and and uh, of course um, get something absolutely unique very very unique um, in terms of, of what it is that would be that would be great all support would be uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, congratulations to Joe Potter's women's side for their comeback victory yesterday over Hibs. It's getting to squeaky bum time for them. They're not they're not doing the big massive scores that they used to do in the early part of the season, and I'm not 100% sure uh, why, but you know they're, they're still firing, they're still winning games, and they have a slew of difficult games coming up, which means that their opponents have a slew of difficult games coming up as well. So the victory was all, all the more important to, to keep the, the lead atop the, the women's premiership. So good for them for doing that. And just a wee bit of an update on the, the Carey's travels over the last wee while. Um, Debbie and Andy managed to make it to the Liverpool game they actually did the Magical Mystery Tour uh, for the Beatles on Saturday and then went to the Liverpool-Brighton game on Sunday. Good result there. Chloe was actually at the Hibs game eventually after a wee bit of a ticket office mishap and got to the Hibs game at the same time. And, and I believe all three of them are going to be 
at the Old Firm game this coming Saturday, Sunday. Sorry, so that's good for them. Not jealous at all. And on the same sort of vein, I'd like to wish safe travels to Brian and Gaynor Campbell, who are travelling home for this weekend's Old Firm game as well. And and I think they're also taking in a David Holmes event at a, a, a downtown hotel in Glasgow. I know we don't say downtown in Glasgow, but I'll just say it anyway since I've already said it. And I believe they're also going to fit in, it's a whirlwind trip um, that they're taking from California. They're also going to take in a curry at Mr. Singh's. So they've got, um, and I think they're actually planning to get together with the Careys after the old firm game. So it's going to be very, very busy and they're heading over there for Brian's um, I think it's an early celebration for, for Brian's 50th birthday, which is coming up. So I think I'll mention a wee bit more about that next week. Uh, but what a way to celebrate. Yeah, just, I'm just going to jump on a plane, fly over, go to Mr. Singh's, go to see David Holmes, go to the Old Firm game and, and just enjoy it with my missus. Uh, well done and a happy birthday when it comes, Brian. And just another mention here for the Toronto Midtown uh, cultural night that they're having on Friday, July the 19th at 7pm. No cover charge, but if you're looking to reserve a table, a table, please do email tmrsc1998 at outlook.com to reserve your seat. And that will come up quicker than you think. And I'd like to do one last week, kind of personal one here. Last week... So as as people have for regular listeners anyway, you'll know that I I transitioned into uh, to being a full time coach, life coach, leadership coach, high performance coach, that sort of thing, and and oh, that was what was that last November, and at the same time I've been building up my qualifications and and doing a whole bunch of things. I haven't talked about much of that stuff on here, but last week on on Thursday morning I passed my professional certified coach designation with the International Coaching Federation and that's the one the reason I mentioned it today that's the one that I've been absolutely you know gunning for since day one of my coaching journey which is um, which is coming up for three years old now and that's the big one that I wanted internationally recognized very difficult to get and, and you know a lot of intensive work and coaching and practice and education that goes into that and then of course writing and passing the exam and it's kind of funny because I had a lodge meeting late on Wednesday night, a lodge leadership meeting, and then I had a, another meeting with Rangers in the morning to plan, to continue to plan NASA 2025. Straight after the Rangers meeting on Thursday morning, I went over to my kitchen table, logged in, got my, myself all set up for the exam, took this, took the test, and was very, very fortunate to pass as well. So just, uh, I'm very, very delighted with that, and if you've seen anything on my LinkedIn and stuff like that, you'll know that I've already communicated that out to the masses. But yeah, kind of pleased with myself for that one. It's always nice to give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back at the same time. On to NASA 2025, I can confirm it's 437 days and 62 weeks until we descend upon Kissimmee and lovely Osceola County in Florida. And last week I told you when it was, but I didn't actually tell you the dates. <laughs> um, so the dates are June the 12th to the 16th. That's the Thursday to the Sunday, 2025. We did put a bit of a teaser out on social media, on our social media channels last week. And we did have a couple of kickoffs last week, as I mentioned. We had the kickoff, the main kickoff with Experience Kissing Me and Rangers, and then we had one dedicated to, to Rangers only. This week, we do have a kickoff with Five Stars, and they're going to help support the event as well. And we are closing in on our ability to confirm and communicate who our MC is going to be for the entire event. So all in all, we're off to a great start. We will be working with the hotel this week to get the rooms opened for booking maybe later this week or early early next week. But um, I did hope to, to get a chance to email them earlier today, but I didn't get a chance before recording. But yeah, all systems go, folks, and then you'll get an idea of what the hotel is and what the amenities are and the location and such. And then we'll get moving on with ticket sales as well. We'd like to get the ticket sales out there relatively early. Normally, we kind of do the ticket sales kind of roughly around about September time, but we're going to try and get them out before the summer, basically. And then, you know, you can start to ease in so that the expense doesn't all come at the one time. So yeah, that's where we're at on that. Very exciting times. It's great to be back in the convention mode, I have to say. And just a wee update. I did mention last week that on the tickets, we follow the process, but things are going to be very busy for the ticket office as we as we move forward. And that's not changed any. I think we, what we've managed to do, we don't have 100% confirmation, but we've managed to secure all asks for all tickets that have come in thus far. We do have a couple of asks, I believe, for... 
the cup semi-final and the allocation of that hasn't been fully, fully determined or decided just yet. But I think we've we managed to get everybody what they needed for the Old Firm game, which is a minor miracle, quite honestly. And uh, and through a lot of hard work and endeavour with with the ticket office and and Brian uh, Brian Campbell doing what he had to do to get that organised. So so that's great news. Um, so keep the request coming. We'll do our very best. But as I mentioned last week, just just note that it's going to get busier and busier and busier, and it's going to be more and more difficult to secure these tickets. I'm sure. On the communication section, the GERS guide wasn't published by the time I'm recording. Right now it's 8.55am. I have a coaching session at 9am, so I'm going to rush through <laughs> this last wee bit here so that I can be there for my client. But on the GERS guide, you will have information about the uh, Joe Potter's game. Uh, that There will be um, something related to... Um, the, the loan review at some point this week and what I, what I would imagine is that the, the press conference for the Old Firm game will be on Friday. Other than that, check out YouTube, check out <laughs> check out um, uh, the, the Rangers website and see what's going to be there. Um, apologies for not getting to that, but they, for, they seem to publish it late on a Monday for some reason, maybe just trying to grab everything they can from the day's news. Um, on the Euro 2024 pool, we, we do have, I have a volunteer. Last week I mentioned I didn't have a volunteer. Now I have a volunteer. Um, I'm going to chat with uh, Sandra. Sandra, thank you very much for volunteering and, and figure out, uh, connect basically connect her with Bobby and then figure out how we're going to get that communicated out and get going now that we know that, that all the teams that are going to be competing at Euro 2024. So that's great news. Thanks again to Sandra for that and thanks to everyone else for conveniently missing and inverted commas that email <laughs> on the NASA newsletter I know Lorraine is putting some feelers out what we're looking for is photographs of of you folks in action at your clubs you know photographs of the club photographs of the people at the club I know some some clubs like to go outside and, and take photographs outside before or after the game or action shots from inside more so we're looking for that sort of stuff for this weekend it's going to be a big big weekend of course and we want to see people hopefully celebrating after the game and then we can put that in future editions of the NASA newsletter so don't don't worry if it doesn't get in at some point we'll do a feature club at some point just to kind of whet the appetite of people and, and put them in the newsletter and of course again if you have anything else that you'd like to see in the newsletter please don't hesitate to reach out to Lorraine and she will do her best to incorporate that in there as well and I mentioned David Holmes earlier I, that is still on my radar I'm going to keep mentioning it until I get the opportunity to get the interview done uh, I know Brian is going to kind of grease the wheels a wee bit when he's at the event um, with with David and <clears throat> excuse me, and his, his handlers, I guess you could say, or, or his agents or however that he's got that structured, just to make sure they haven't they know that we haven't forgotten about them and we'll get to that as well. Okay, dokie, okay, my friends, that will do it for this week. As always, I'd like to take you, I'd like to thank you or take this opportunity to thank you very, very much for taking the time to listen and please do share it with whomever you think will enjoy it. Folks, this is the calm before the storm. Let's keep absolutely everything crossed from a fan's perspective uh, that we have a solid performance and the victory that we are looking for this week and Philippe you know what to do my friend please 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 go and do it and give us the victory we want so that we can start to really build towards something special for, for the end of the season we know how big this one is folks let's do this all the very best to you please take care of yourself and I'll talk to you next week take care cheerio now